So we'll come back to some more Earthbound. For last time, we got trapped in a locker in hell. So we had to reach out to some Canadian to the north, and, well, now we're Jeff. We have a bubble monkey, and we are happy in the land of winters. And this time, I have come to repay some debts. Yeah, um, last episode, I got a lot of stuff wrong, and I do apologize very, very much for that. I, I don't know why I thought that speed dictated his accuracy. That makes no sense. So, going down from the stat list, offense and defense, those are self-explanatory. Speed only determines if you evade, which is, it's a different stat for an evasion. You can either evade through your luck stat or through your speed stat. I know it's weird. It's probably where I got confused. Speed also determines who goes first in battle. That's all it does. Guts, at least for Jeff's case, will make it to where he'll live 1 HP randomly. Vitality, it's self-explanatory. IQ. I also, I realize I need 1 XP for next level. I hate my life. <laughs> IQ is actually something really helpful for Jeff. We'll talk about that when we see it. And luck determines if you hit smash attacks, which Jeff can't. But it also determines if you land a hit on an enemy or dodge, uh, dodge out of evasion. Don't know why I had a voice crack there, but here we are. <laughs> so I do apologize for that. Jeff can only miss if he has status ailments afflicted upon him. But I, one thing I got right at least is that he cannot miss on his own. There has to be something afflicting him for him to miss. So there is that. Which is good, I guess. I guess a good caveat for not being able to use PSI or anything for that matter. Besides his rockets and his guns. And speaking of bottle rockets, again, I don't know why I thought this was determined by... How did I get a back attack? Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was determined by speed. I think it's because I was watching a bunch of speedruns on the game, and a lot of speedrunners say sp uh, speed is the most important stat for Jeff. That's simply just so that he gets first in battle. Therefore, nuking all the enemies in the way, so... That's not what I thought it was. I was thinking of luck more than anything, so... But unlike Ness and Paula, weirdly enough, Jeff's, uh, Jeff's more uh, most important stat is his IQ. And again, we'll get into IQ when we see this mechanic pop up, because it's very unique to Jeff. But, you know, there is that. Anyways, one last thing, too. I forgot to mention that Winters is not part of Eagle Land at all. Up, uh, I use there. Why is there a magic butterfly? I don't have PSI. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering, uh, magic butterflies literally do nothing to Jeff. But the land of Winters is a country within a new land called Foggy Land, and it's representative of the United Kingdom. So nobody in this tent. There, there they got uh, taken by the forest and. You would think you had to Metal Gear Solid through these guys? Nah. I heard that the wind is always blowing when Tessie appears. Achoo! I feel like I'm catching a cold. Probably because it is cold. Uh, how do I... Okay, there we go. Uh, uh. Tessie may, be... may unexpectedly live uh, be living in these woods. I personally think so. Tessie, huh? Weird. Let me go over and talk to more of these guys. What a cute little monkey. Would you like a piece of gum? Maybe monkeys don't like gum. I forgot to mention this. Try to drop the pack of bubble gum. Don't spit your gum out, even if it has lost its flavor. <laughs> and I think if you use help on it, this is the balloon monkey's favorite. It will not help you recover, but you also never run out because it's a super jumbo pack. That's an interesting bit of dialogue there. They called the bubble monkey balloon monkey. This is pretty much from old beta content where Bubble Monkey was originally going to be called Balloon Monkey. He was called that in Japan, so I guess a little excerpt that was left behind in localization. You're right, we're here at Lake Tess, waiting to see Tessie. We're known as the Tessie Watching Club. So you've also been bit bitten by Tessie Mania. You're in luck. We may be able to see Tessie tomorrow. I can't wait! Weirdos. I'm the cook for the Tessie Watching Club. How about some stew? No, no, there's no need to pay me. You are a friend who I've never met before. Jeff, head south. 
I am Paula. If you hear this message, go to the south. Working through the night, Jeff fixed the broken spray can, and it became the defense spray. Jeff being the genius that he is. He is the only party member able to turn broken items into usable items. In this case, the defense spray. This is determined by his IQ stat. That is why it's so important on him. Determining how high the IQ stat is gives Jeff a chance to repair broken items. So, it's actually really worth your time to try to build towards IQ for Jeff. Now, here's the thing. IQ does nothing else for Jeff besides that, so it is kind of a double-edged sword in that factor. I want to go up here and at least try to get another level because I don't remember how high of an IQ you have to have to try to repair the broken air gun. I'm gonna at least see. And it is a random chance. Even if you have the amount of IQ you need to repair something, it's still a random chance if you repair it. So, uh, bread roll. Can I throw something away? Do I have a cookie or something? Uh, yes I do. Perfect. And also, Jeff is one of the rare instances that he has a protractor. I'm going to try to hold on to that as long as I can. Uh, hello, gruff goat. I want to murder your face. I guess since we're walking around here, I can explain why speedrunners absolutely hate the bubble monkey. <laughs> bubble monkey... Oh, how did I get a backstab? Wow, that was very cool. Bubble monkey is the speedrunner's worst nightmare. <laughs> Simply because... Bubble Monkey likes to hang out in the back, and because of how the battle system works, even if it's not you directly, if a party member gets hit by an enemy, it counts as you getting into a fight. So, you can already tell that trying to go around corners and stuff sucks with Bubble Monkey, because he'll do the standing around thing and enemies will just run into him, therefore forcing you into a fight that you did not want to get forced into. So, that's why a lot of speedrunners absolutely hate the Bubble Monkey. It's very RNG dependent on him. And speedruns of this game, that can be un put on hold. He's here. Pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Get ready for an instant memory. Look at the camera. Ready. Save Fuzzy Pickles. Oh, he doesn't even do the peace sign. What a great photograph. He'll always bring back the fondest of memories. I think he's got Bubble Monkey in the picture. I think that's a forced one, too. Eh, I don't know. Maybe you can avoid him. I've never seen anybody actively avoid all of the fuzzy, uh, fuzzy pickle spots, so... In that case, that would suck, because that would force you to never go heal at Mom. <laughs> and actually, there's... There, yeah, there are forced ones, yet there's the one right outside of the Chaos Theater in Tucson. And I don't think I have enough IQ to fix the... The broken air gun just yet, so that's gonna be put on hold. Unless if I... Yeah, no, it doesn't tell you. I guess I'll put on screen what IQ you need for the broken air gun in case you wanted to grind that for some reason. It's not necessary, but it's there if you want to do it. But it is a windy day today. Uh, I have not been... Have I been into all these tents yet? I don't think I have. Nobody in here. Wow, this is just great. There's only one more tent. I can at least go and see what's in here. Oh, hey. If I find Tessie, do you think I'll get in the newspaper? I'm looking for my 15 minutes of fame. You do you, buddy. Um, I think I actually do want to save here. I haven't saved for a long time. I know this screws over the dad thing, but we're not going to be called by dad for a while because that only happens with Ness, so I think I am going to save. And... Uh-huh. What do I want to do here? Yeah, just end. Because he, he, he... Oh, crap. Okay, that in pressing N does make you soft reset. Okay, fine. I guess I'm gonna soft reset! <laughs> uh... Okay, good. For some reason, the file said Ness, and I got very scared. While I was going back into the menus, I changed our windows to be minty, because... I don't know. I like mint. A lot of people hate mint. I don't understand you people. Ch like, mint chocolate chip ice cream is amazing. I don't know what is wrong with you. I guess because toothpaste. I don't know. Give me some gum now. I'll take care of everything. 
I wonder why you were called Balloon Monkey. Oh. Hello. The derpiest Loch Ness Monster I've ever seen. I love Tessie very much. A nice cheery theme to get us across to the other side. Thank you, Tassie. Now go on and become a mythological creature that you're known to be. And can I just say something about Tassie? I don't know if they make this, but uh, I, I, I guess for context, I own shirts that have the little pocket on the uh, or a little sleeve on the front or whatever. I so want a little Tessie thing to be stitched into the back of that so it looks like he's coming, or she, I don't know what Tessie is. So it looks like Tessie's coming out of the little sleeve pocket thing. I want that so bad. I think it'd be cool. Or there, I'm just being a dork. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we have another one of these weird pencil statues, so we can't do anything about that. Also, uh, referring back to Jeff's uh, IQ, the max IQ you will ever need for Jeff to fix something is 65. Now, technically I'm wrong about that, but there's stuff in the future that is just not worth the IQ points for that, so that's why I'm saying 65. Um, actually, I wanted to check the sign outside. I should, I gotta be careful with that. This dungeon has no entrance fee. Come on in. This is Brick Road. And you can tell by this theme that it's not really a dungeon. Welcome to my modest dungeon. Brick Road. Right. Well, I have a reintroduction of these guys. Rowdy Mice! They're just like the ones in Giant Step. They have a really high gut stat. They like to hit smash attacks. <laughs> That's all they really do. But I'm not here for the worthless, stupid, rowdy mice that'll likely get me killed. Speaking of which, I'm gonna actually eat one of the bread rolls. I have a ton of these. Thank you, gruff goats. Actually, it wasn't even the gruff goats, it was the mad dogs. If we get down here, yes, there you are! Oh, I love this enemy so much. The mad duck! Look at him. He has the bringer of chaos and destruction. He's the god of war in this game. He doesn't really do anything. He makes you use PSI if you have it, in which case Jeff has no PSI, so... Otherwise, he can make you not use PSI, and he can use physical attacks. Which, oh my god, lots of XP from that, holy crap. So, uh, yeah, mad ducks are kind of funny. And how are they not a meme? I'm just saying, like, Mad Ducks, they are so memeable. They're so derpy. They probably are memed nowadays, though, thanks to a certain somebody. And we have a present that attacks us. It is the worthless protoplasm. They don't really do anything. <laughs> they can call for other... Well, you can punch me. I didn't even know you could do that. He can call for reinforcements, which usually are Mad Ducks. He's not that bad. Although, uh, his existence is kind of depressing because... In Japan, they were called What Do I Matter Anyway? <laughs> That's just sad, man. I feel kind of bad for those guys. Broken iron. I need to heal. Uh, yeah, I'll just heal. Because I want the broken iron. We already have one on Ness and Paula, but we can't really exactly reach those right now, so I'll just leave that be. Uh, more mad ducks. And here's another thing. Watch for falling materials. Brick Road. Falling materials is my specialty! Twice in one video, I will gladly take it. 
pictures taken instantaneously. I'm a photographic genius if I do say so myself. Get ready for an instant memory. Look at the camera. Ready, say fuzzy pickles. I'm like holding the monkey's hand, that's cute. What a great photograph, it'll always bring back the fondest of memories. Right, you also got a back shot of the mad duck there, which is rarely seen, they usually just chase after you. I just love that this theme is associated with the mad duck as well, <laughs> like, they don't do anything, that's what I love about them, they just sit there and try to make you use PSI, and, well, since they're being introduced to somebody who has no psychic ability, they are completely pointless. Also, I just love that this theme is what's used for the brick road. Anyways, head through here, get the cross. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do I want to get rid of? Um, I already have a ruler. I don't need a ruler. I'm gonna hold on to the protractor. And you know what? We don't even run into insects here. Get rid of this damn insecticide spray. Give us a croissant. Easily. Head over here, and... Oh, I was gonna see if I can do something. Two worthless protoplasms, and they almost murdered me. How can it be really... How could you be worthless if you damn near killed me? You're more useful than the mad ducks. Uh, I'm gonna have to fight that rowdy mouse, huh? Alright, bring it on. Bring it on, mousey. Yeah. It's just a weird... This part of the game can be pretty difficult because... You're back on being on your own. Can you stop hitting smash attacks? Jesus. I know it's kind of your thing, but God, it hurts. Level seven. But this is a kind of a rough trip in the journey as well, because, well, we're on our own again. Bubble Monkey really does not help at all. Yep, hey, stun gun. I, that definitely does help. We can upgrade our offense. Finally take that. And uh, I don't think I need to drop the pop. Uh, do I? I'm not gonna sell. Here's the thing with guns, too. Some guns you can't sell, and some guns you can sell. I think the stun gun is actually one of them that you cannot sell. I'm not sure about that, but... To make space, I think I'm just gonna drop the pop gun. It'll reappear at the locker that we can never get back to, so... You can never re-enter the boarding house, unfortunately. Hello, Maxwell. Yeah, Maxwell acts as the dad in this journey. At least for Jeff's journey. Way to go! Please come back again. Brick Road. Weird. And if you want more trivia, in Japan this dungeon was called the Low Budget ju Dungeon. <laughs> Maybe it was too easy? My name's Brick Road, the dungeon developer. I devote my life to making dungeons. Well, by combining my skills and Dr. Andonut's intelligence, I can, I can become Dungeon Man. The first combination of human and dungeon in history. Let's meet again once I have become Dungeon Man. Would you like to get a good night's rest? Free healing spot. Take care. Come back again. I'm gonna feel bad for saying this because he is actually being really nice. He looks like a wiener head, man. Look at his face. You can't tell me that doesn't look like the, you know, men knows what he looks like. Just saying. <laughs> uh, I think it's supposed to be like a really long mustache or something, but... Yeah, no, it's, uh, as the, you know what, it's applicable, because we're basically in the UK. He looks like a bellend. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Dungeon Man, I like you a lot. You're kind of weird, but, yeah, your design is, uh, not exactly family fr friendly in my case. Maybe it's just my eyes being weird or something, but, because usually I notice those things before other people do. I've never seen it mentioned. But probably because uh, people are more mature than I am, and I'll just lay out the facts. I am one shotting the mice now. That is very nice. The other nice thing is that I'm ahead on the levels that I was planning on being. Up, uh, hello, more friends. We have the return of the attack slugs. They're pretty much the bubble monkey can hit smash attacks. Why? <laughs> okay, I didn't know I could hit. Uh, man, you're doing a lot more damage. Probably because these are attack slugs. It's very similar to the giant step, so... Lots of good XP grinding here. Hamburger! Man, very much like a giant step. Uh, Jesus! Three attack slugs and they didn't really do much. Oh, great, more rowdy mice. Do I... Oh, well, I'm not gonna one-shot you now. 
But as I was saying earlier with this game being kind of difficult at this point in the journey, yep, freaking smash attacks, I swear to god. I mean, I don't think the attack slug's gonna kill me. You're on your own again, Bubble Monkey rarely helps, and when he does, it's just kind of, I don't know. Bubble Monkey's kind of just there. Level 8, though. I'll take it. Lots of HP out of that. And you have to be careful with item management because, uh, yeah, you don't have a lot of items. I'm gonna use the hamburger. I think that's the lesser of all the ones we have right now. Uh, god, these enemies, they usually do not show up this often. <laughs> the rowdy mice is what I'm mostly terrified of because of the stupid smash attack thing. But at least we one-shot them now, so that's good. Bubble Monkey, man, Bubble Monkey almost single-handedly took down that attack slug. Okay, maybe I'll give Mo Bubble Monkey more credit. At least he's more useful than Pokey. Just saying. To the next area. Oh, great. Okay, I am actually resetting for that because that can be annoying to fight. Okay, good. Yeah, there's one new enemy that is completely new in this place. Oh, you can show up in one at a time. The Strut and Evil Mushroom. They're the exact same as the Rambling Evil Mushroom, except they cannot use spores, so they cannot mushroomize you. Thank God. And they can drop cookies. For some reason. I'm gonna try to go over here before that mushroom tries to murder me. Oh. Man, these guys are everywhere. Oh, you do fight in twos. The other one just decided to have his friend killed. Okay. Hopefully Bubble Monkey... Okay, well that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna hope that Bubble Monkey attacks the first one. And the second one's down. Absent-minded, yeah. These guys are kind of just worse rambling evil mushrooms. They don't really do much. They can physically attack you. It's just... They're mostly there for XP. Holy crap, level 9. But the good thing is... Hey, cheap bracelet. That's also another good thing. So many good things happening immediately. The good thing is that at least we're high enough level and... In my notes, I do have a little bit of a guide that's telling me, it's like, hey, you should be around this level at this point. I'm above that level right now. <laughs> so, at least I'm at the level now. I was behind, but I think I'm good now, so. Personally, for me, I always get paranoid of being, er, about being at the right level, especially in Pokemon. I am so bad with that in Pokemon, where I always panic about being underleveled, so I grind beyond belief, and yeah, I end up just one-shotting everything. Which makes it a very interesting uh, ordeal in Let's Plays because I don't want to be overleveled for the LP. Bottle Rocket. And here is an interesting tidbit here. Seems like it can't do anything, right? Wrong. This is where the pack of bubblegum comes into play. The bubble monkey took a piece of the bubblegum, chewed it, and started blowing. Yep. So many of you probably just got so pissed off just seeing that. That is such an obscure thing, and there is no telling that you had to do that. Oh my god, there's more mushrooms. Yeah. I'm not going to defend the game on that. That is really obscure, and you would not think to do that. So, don't make that mistake if you're following along. Okay, fine. I'll fight two mushrooms. I'm fine with two. Just don't give me three. <laughs> Wow, the monkey actually killed an enemy. That's very rare. Level 10, though. Wow. And, uh... I guess that warrants a... Okay, I'll warrant the cookie, at least. And I guess I'll warrant the croissant. And we're gonna fight our dungeon here! Only Ness can absorb the power of this place. Yep, we are SOL when it comes to granite giving us another sanctuary location, but now she's my type. I think I'll ask her for a date. Monkeys are so brave, man. The monkey's got more riz than I do. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, modern language is weird. So, oh God. Uh, uh, I'll get into that guy in a second. We are now... Uh, running away from that guy. We're now in a safer area. You kids don't look very bright. Let me ex let me explain. These stones are making this pattern. It's called Stonehenge. UFOs often visit here. You must have seen it on TV or read about it in the tabloids. 
Yes, that Stonehenge. I mean, we are basically in the UK, but we've made it to the lab. In Japan, it was called a labo. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Enough of the in Japan stuff. I'm starting to copy people when I'm not trying to, but we made it to the lab. And yeah, we'll talk about those uh, big hunky dudes later. We'll t cover them in the next episode, but next time on Earthbound, I think we're going to be seeing who's at the lab here and making necessary preparations to head back to Ness and Paula. So, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.